This video is about branch attachments. It's going to be a longer video, probably a two-parter, because these terms and concepts are going to be among the most useful information you'll have as a practicing arborist. You'll use it if you're making pruning recommendations, doing the actual pruning, assessing hazards, and more. In terms of terminology, you need to know the difference between a branch and a stem. The stem, which I'll also call the parent stem, is the larger one that the branch grows out of. And when that branch starts producing secondary branches of its own, it is also a parent stem. You can use these terms interchangeably in your work, and I think people will know what you're talking about, but it's going to be really important for the concepts in this video to keep those separate. A quick review of some branch and stem terminology. Leaves and buds are attached at nodes. So in this axis between the leaf and the branch, there's a bud there. Next year, that bud is going to grow out and you'll get an actual branch. This connection here is the branch union and more casually you'll hear it referred to as the crotch. You can think of these branches as being largely self-sustaining. So this leaf is going to photosynthesize and produce energy that feeds this branch and this branch will store stuff for these leaves. And you'll also have a more long-term transport to other parts of the plant but for the most part imagine each branch as a self-sustaining unit. This is helpful in pruning because you want to treat each unit separately. When you're pruning, you want to keep the impacts limited to this branch without impacting the stem that it's attached to. This will make more sense when I show you some internal images of what the branch attachment looks like. Growth in woody plants always starts with primary growth, which is elongation or getting taller. Then secondary growth starts, which is where secondary phloem and xylem is added, and it makes the branch or the stem thicker. There is also an order to the secondary growth. First, the branch puts on secondary growth, it adds on xylem, and then the stem wraps around it with its own xylem. And if you imagine that this happens over and over, you're going to get a situation where the branch becomes really embedded in the parent stem. This piece of firewood shows you how deep that branch connected into the parent stem. You can see the curvature of the overlapping wood here. This is why epicormic shoots are so weakly attached because they originate from the surface of the wood. Over time, they can get embedded deeper and deeper as that stem gets wider and wider, but it's definitely very weak compared to this original branch, and it will take a long time to replace that strength. From a conducting point of view, the branch is only attached to the stem at the bottom on the underside. The wood comes down, curves around, and is attached there. They discovered this by injecting dye into the branch and seeing where it showed up in the stem. Because of the constant overlapping of branch and stem wood at the base of the branch, it eventually creates a swelling and that's called the branch collar. This image here shows a very well developed branch collar, but it's not always this obvious. That's going to depend on the species because some trees just won't produce obvious branch collars and it may also depend on the size of the branch. While this branch collar is being formed by the overlapping wood, you also get what's called a branch bark ridge. It's formed when the bark of the branch and the bark of the stem get pushed up at the top of the attachment. And again, this is not going to be obvious on all trees. Just know that when you do see it, it's normal and not a problem. Because the branch collar and the ridge both contain material from the parent stem, you want to be careful when you're making a pruning cut. You want to make it outside of both of those, but 
not too far out or you'll leave a stub. In this case, it's pretty easy. There's a visual delineation of where you would make that cut. So you would make it outside of that area. On trees where the branch collar isn't obvious, you might be tempted to leave a much longer stub to make sure not, you're not cutting into the stem. But if you're looking at this example, if you leave a really long stub, it takes a long time for the stem, which is technically still alive, you know, if this wasn't a piece of wood, to grow over this stub and then finally close over the wound on this side. When you're making a proper cut on a branch that has a longer branch collar like this, it's going to look like you're leaving this section as a stub, especially to a client who is expecting more of a flush cut. It's important to understand this branch collar concept so you can explain to them that you're making the cut at the right place and why you're leaving that extra section because they will definitely ask. If you have the opportunity to return to the same trees over and over, you'll be able to tell if you made a proper cut. If the parent stem was not damaged, it will form a roll of wound wood over the pruning cut that has a consistent width across all sides. If the cut was too deep, the damaged parts of the stem will produce less wound wood than the undamaged parts. Another issue with pruning too close is that it compromises the tree's natural defenses. Remember I mentioned thinking of branches as separate units. It's not going to help a tree to have an injury or an infection on one of the smaller branches that easily gets into a larger parent stem. When a branch dies, the parent stem can create a chemically fortified zone that seals off the branch to prevent pathogens and decay from entering the rest of the tree. Here's what that looks like in a cross section. Here's the branch, and you can't really see, but there's two arrows here that indicate the chemical protection zone. That's literally in the branch collar. So when you make a proper cut, you're cutting outside of that, and this protection zone is going to be able to produce chemicals that seal this branch off. If you cut inside of it, you're damaging the very wood that's responsible for that process and you'll be impacting the tree's natural defenses. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in part two, specifically how the branch protection zone relates to branch size.